Good day everyone. Uh, once again, we are back together again. Welcome back to our channel. And I hope by now I'm your favorite maths and science guy. Um, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please just make sure that you're part of the channel and hit that notification bell if you haven't. Okay, and uh, uh, obviously for those of you who need assistance either with mathematics or physical science, uh, please just get in touch with us and our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right, now um, we're going to be looking at inverse functions today. And I just want to start maybe with a little bit of an introduction uh, of what an inverse is. Okay, so essentially when you've got an inverse function, okay, so if we've got an, uh, the original graph f of x, all right, for an inverse, what happens is that we use the symbol f minus 1 of x. Now, note there's a difference between f minus 1 of x, f to the power minus 1 of x. Uh, that means inverse and the derivative. There's a difference between those. We'll talk about the derivative when we get to calculus. Okay, so in this case, what happens in the original graph? Of course, everything that is on the x axis, okay, on the original graph, uh, so everything on the x axis now happens on the y axis, okay, uh, for, you know, the, the inverse graph, okay. In fact, I don't even know why I wrote axis in two different ways. Uh, I don't even know if that's the correct spelling. Uh, is it? No, I think it's, uh, I think the E is correct. Okay, so in this case, when we talk about Y and X axis, right, so everything that happens on the X here happens on the Y there. Everything that happens on the Y here uh, happens on the X there. So what simply we are going to do, we're going to take just a couple of examples now, but what I want you to know is that for an inverse function, what you're going to actually have is that uh, you've got a swapping of values uh, between the y and the x. However, we end up having something very special, that the two graphs kind of mirror each other around the line y is equal to x. I'm going to show you that, okay? So they mirror each other around the line y is equals to x. It means that they are symmetrical around that line, meaning when you fold the two graphs, uh, the original and the inverse, around the line y is equals to x, they actually sit perfectly on top of each other. All right. Now, I want us to take uh, our first example. All right. Let's take a linear function. So suppose we've got y is equal to 2x minus three. Okay. So that's our original graph. So let's call that f of x. Okay. So let's say f of x uh, in that case. So now um, uh, let's start by drawing the graph so that you'll see what it looks like. So what do we do to get that graph? You're going to draw the, uh, you know, your, or rather you're going to find the x intercept. Okay. We know this is where y is equals to zero. Okay, so you're going to say, um, so this is going to be 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, and therefore x is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so that's our x-intercept. We know that it will be 3 over 2 and 0. Okay, and then what about our y-intercept? Our y-intercept, this will take place where we've got x equal to 0. So in this case, if we substitute x is equal to 0 into the original equation, what you find is y is equal to minus 3. Right, so now we, we know it also passes through the point 0 and minus 3. So let's try and find those two points in our graph there. Um, so there's our x axes and y axes. Um, so that's x and y. So now it means I'm going to have 3 over 2. Okay, let's say suppose 3 over 2 is there. Okay, so that's x is 3 over 2 and 0. So we know our graph is going to pass through that point. In fact, let me just choose a different color uh, for the graph. Okay, and then it's also going to pass through the point 0 and negative 3. Okay, let's say that is over there. Okay, 
all right so in this case what happens so it means that our graph is going to pass through those two points uh, let's try and draw the graph okay so we end up with a graph that looks more or less like that that value there is negative three okay and that value over there is three over two okay and there's our graph now what would be the inverse of this graph look like okay so what do you do when you draw an inverse function so f of minus one f minus one of x now what we're going to do is we're going to swap between the y and the x so where there was a y i put an x where there was an x i put a y okay so this is y is equals to 2x minus 3 so now it means i'm going to have x is equals to 2y minus 3 so that would be the inverse however once you've swapped the x and the y value uh, uh, you know variables what you need to do is get the equation in standard form again so what we're going to do is okay let's get it in standard form so now we've got x is equal to 2y minus 3 okay if we get it in standard form let's take 3 to the other side now this becomes x plus 3 is equal to 2y okay so i took the 3 over to the other side of course it becomes positive okay let's write it the other way 2y is equals to x plus 3 okay so that it becomes logical for us so we're now going to divide okay all sides by 2 what I do on the left, I do on the right. Okay, divide by 2 and divide by 2 there. So I end up with y is equals to x over 2, which is the same as a half of x plus 3 over 2. Now, let's look at this. How would I find the y-intercept? Um, okay, maybe let's start with the x-intercept. Um, not that it matters, but you know as a matter of procedure said all right let's find the x-intercept here so we know this is where y is equal to zero so what do i have i have one over two x uh, plus three over two is equal to zero and so i've got a half of x is equal to a negative three over two Okay, so I can now drop down the denominators because they're exactly the same. So I end up with uh, x is equals to minus 3. Or in this case, instead of saying dropping the denominators, you are simply multiplying by 2 on both sides. And you'll see that you end up with x is equals to minus 3. Now, you remember, uh, in our original graph, do you remember that it was um, uh, the x-intercept, rather the y-intercept that was uh, equal to 3 this time it's minus 3 and 0 whereas in the original graph it was 0 and minus 3 do you see that we've made a swap now around the uh, values now it's the x-intercept that is uh, that has that label whereas in the previous one it was the y-intercept that had that point okay right of course now we're going to find the y-intercept I'm sure you can already see it okay um, our graph our inverse graph is this one here okay let me just do it over this side um, so I'm going to have y remember for the y intercept ooh, um, yeah my writing is a little bit uh, ugly today right so y is equals to a half of zero plus 3 over 2 so uh, this time it means that we've got y is equals to 3 over 2 so at the y intercept we know this is the point where x is 0 and y is 3 over 2 okay so now let's try and draw the graph okay um, right I'm gonna use a different color uh, let's take green okay so now let's label the points i've got x intercept at minus three and zero okay x intercept at minus three negative three and zero and you remember it happened on the y so that's negative three and zero 
So that would be our x-intercept. But what about our y-intercept? Our y-intercept is now 3 over 2. Okay, note there. We said it's 3 over 2, uh, 0 and 3 over 2. So where x is 0 and y is 3 over 2. So that would take place over there. And what happens this time around? Okay, we are going to just simply join those two. Okay, right. I want to extend that other line. So it means that they would um, obviously meet at a point there. Okay, now um, you can see we've got two lines actually. I don't know why I extended this one with a green. Right, so... Right, so they are meeting at a certain point. Now, what I want you to quickly note, we did say that the inverse graph and the original graph reflect each other around the line y is equal to x. I'm trying to find a color that's nice and bright. So if I were to draw the line y is equal to x, remember it passes through the origin, okay? It passes through the origin. So in this case, you can see that's a mirror image. The green graph is the mirror image of the mustard graph, okay? And the reflection of it is around that yellow line there, which is the line y is equal to x, all right? So in this case, there goes our inverse. All you simply do is to swap the two values together and you get your inverse. Now, um, what if they had asked us, okay, I know I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. What if they asked us, um, find the points where f of x is equal to f minus 1 of x, okay? Uh, what do you do? Of course, all you simply do is just take the equations of f of x, okay? So y is equal to 2x minus 3, okay? So this is where 2x minus 3 is equal to, then we take the equation of the inverse, uh, half of x plus 3 over 2. So 1 over 2x plus 3 over 2. Is that a plus there? Okay, yes, it is. All right, and what do we do? Where they are equal, in this case, we're just going to equate the two equations. Okay, so I've got 2x. Okay, let's um, try and get all the like terms together. Okay, I've got 2x and half x. And I've got 3 and 3 over 2. All of those are uh, just numbers without variables. They're constants. Okay, so in this case, uh, if I take half x to the other side, uh, I end up with 2x minus half x. That will give me 3 over 2x and in this case I've got 3 over 2 which is this guy here if I take the 3x I mean sorry the minus 3 to the other side uh, it becomes a positive 3 right and now 3 uh, plus uh, 3 over 2 all right so that would be 3 plus 3 over 2 Okay, uh, probably we'll get to a point where we can just deal with fractions uh, because, you know, um, people tend to struggle with, sex, uh, with with fractions. Okay, so in this case, if I were to add 3 plus 3 over 2, you can put it in your calculator. But what you're actually going to end up with is 9 over 2. So what we can now do is just drop those denominators. Okay, so I've got 3x is equal to 9 and we can divide by 3 three on both sides okay and what i end up having is nine divided by three is actually um nine divided by three is three uh, right so nine divided by three is three so it means the two graphs will intersect where x is equal to three but what would be the y the corresponding y value okay now i can substitute x is equal to 3. So um, I can say substitute x is equal to 3. Let's put it in the in the original uh, uh, equation. So in f of x. 
So, and it didn't matter whether you took the graph of f of x or the graph of uh, uh, the inverse, it really wouldn't matter. So in this case, what you would have is f of three would be equals to two times three. So remember it's two x minus three, I think. Uh, yeah, two uh, x minus three, right? And in this case, you've got two times three, which is six minus uh, three, which is um, three as well. So it means at that point, f of three is equal to three. So it means the graph will intersect at the point where x is three and y is also three. Let's see if that is plausible. Okay, definitely it's on the first quadrant. So both x and y are positive. Okay, that's 3 over 2. So yeah, that does look like it's at uh, 3 somewhere. And of course, also for the y, that would be at 3 somewhere. All right. Now, uh, ladies and gents, what I want us to do, we've just, um, uh, I just made an example for you in terms of the linear graph. Let's take one example for the parabola. Okay, shall we? All right, let's do that. All right, so let's have a question where we've got f okay i'm trying to find one here so y is equal to 2x squared okay right i don't want to overly complicate it probably we'll look at some as we go along so now if i've got y is equals to 2x squared that's my f right so in this case what would that graph look like Right, I'm not going to go into all the other gory details, but essentially you would have a graph that looks more or less like this. Okay, right. Um, you end up with a graph that looks like this. Now, question is, all right, what would the graph of f minus 1 of x look like? So all we're going to do we're going to swap between the y and the x, all right? So it means that the inverse graph, f minus 1 of x, will be x is equal to 2y squared. So to get it into standard form again, right? So we're trying to get it into standard form. Okay, so now we're going to say, all right, um, that means we're going to have uh, 2y squared is equal to x. And I'm dividing both sides by 2 just to make sure that we cancel that. Okay. Uh, and then we've got y squared is equal to x over 2. Now, obviously, we need to finish this up. So we end up with y is equal to, now remember, whenever you take the square root, okay, you must say plus or minus. Okay, so this, this we have y is equal to the square root of x over 2, or you can just simply say, uh, yeah, in fact, you know what, let me not complicate it. Uh, let's say the square root of x over 2. Okay. Right, now what would this graph look like? Um, and by the way, you don't need to waste a lot of your time, say for argument's sake. If you've got a parabola and you know that this parabola, um, let's say it passes through the two points, okay? Uh, let's see, when we substitute into that okay, uh, um, original equation, when x is one, y is two times one squared, so y is two, so, Let's say if you take, this is 1, this would be minus 1, um, and it wouldn't matter in this case, we know that it would be 2, okay, this value here will be 2, but it will be the same value for these two, okay, right, now, in this case, what I want us to do, is talk about the inverse. So in this case, you've got um, x is 1 and y is 2. x is minus 1 
and y is 2. And so we are going to now draw the inverse of this graph before we get uh, far. So it means whatever happened at the x now is going to happen at the y. Okay. So I will have x is minus 1 and 2. All right. So in this case, when I draw the inverse of it, remember it was going up on the axis, positive and negative on the y-axis. Now it's going to go. This is what our inverse is going to look like. Okay. Now, uh, let's have a look at it quickly. Uh, what are the, you know, some of the distinguishing feature, uh, features between the two? So uh, the original graph passed through the points where x is minus 1 and y is 2, right? So the inverse is going to now swap that around, okay? That x will now be 2 and y is minus 1, okay? Right, I hope uh, uh, all of you are still with me. So I'm actually just taking that point there. We had x minus 1, y is equals to 2. Now it's going to be the other way around. Okay. Right. So now I have at x is 2. Okay. So if that's 1, x is equals to 2. And y is minus 1. So x is equal to 2. Okay, and y is minus 1. So it means it's that point over that side. Okay, so this will be 2 and minus 1. Okay, and then here, um, so let me just take a different color. Maybe I should have drawn that with a green. I know you guys love colors, right? So, oh no. Okay, so that's my point there. But I've got another point uh, too. Okay, so remember for this one, uh, for the original. Oh no, yeah, I've gone too far now. For the original, we had y is equals to 2x squared. Okay, so we also had the points um, 1 and 2. So now we're going to have the points 2 and 1. 2 and 1. So we've basically just, subst uh, um, you know, swapped the values. All right. You can try and work it out, uh, but I can tell you, uh, you know, it's quite a fair, it's a, quite a mission to do that. So remember what we said. Uh, let me take a different color. Um, remember what we said. That these two graphs should be mirror images of each other around the line Y is equal to X. Okay. Right, so that is what our parabola would look like. Yeah, it looks like quite a monstrosity, but I hope you get the point. You always just swap the values. Okay, right. Now, very quickly, uh, what would be the exponential function look like? You know, um, so I'm going to go to the next one. What would be, uh, what would the exponential function look like? In this case, remember for exponents, we said we've got y is equals to, this is the base, and in this case, the index thereof, so y is equals to ax. Now, what's the function or what's the inverse of a f of x? Okay, so f of x is y. I don't know why I keep squeezing myself in like that. Um, Right, so that's y is equal to ax, right? Now, how do you swap the two? So then you'll have x is equal to a to the power y. But remember, you need to get this y as the subject of the formula. 
and this is where we're going to um, um, you know just apply logarithms so you put logs on both sides so you'd say log of x is equals to the log of a to the power y but remember the law of exponents so we've got log of x is equal to now the law of logs uh, we jump down there okay so we can actually say this is um yeah this is going to be the log or rather y log of a right now what we can do remember a is a finite value whereas x is a variable so we can divide both sides by log a can divide both sides by log a and what you find is that we get rid of those so that uh, that cancels that okay I prefer to use a different color okay so y is equal to log base a of x all right so this is what a an inverse of a an exponential graph looks like okay it's going to be a log graph all right so um you can just play around with that uh, remember what does a, a a log graph or rather what does an exponential graph look like um typically you find a graph that looks like that and you'll see when it comes to the log graph once you draw it it's going to look something like that ah no it's not fairly accurate okay so this would be your f minus 1 of x and this would be f of x all right now uh, i'm going to force this one in but it's not really the most correct there's our line y is equals to a to the power i mean uh, y is equals to x so y is equals to x line you can see that again i wish i could show you that when you take the two graphs, the one of f of x and the inverse, they are simply going to lie exactly on top of each other. Okay, right. So that is what you do in terms of logs. Of course, I can put numbers, uh, but it really wouldn't matter. All I want you to do is just remember to uh, include logs there. Okay, right. All right. So just finally, uh, in conclusion, right. The one thing I want to talk about is uh, the domain and the range uh, in that case, okay? So remember when we talk about the domain, it's where the graph exists on the, you know, on the x-axis. So in this case, now going back to the one that we had, um, in fact, let me talk about, I think it's better if I go to the uh, parabola, it's easier to see it. So in this case, when I talk about the range, uh, sorry, the, the, the domain, this would be from minus infinity to infinity for the original graph, because think about it, it goes all the way up, all the way up here. So it would just be uh, in this case, um, yeah, it, it would be to infinity. So it, you would simply say X is an element of real numbers, isn't it? So you'd say X is an element of real numbers, but what about the range of the graph? Okay, so the range, you would say, hey, look, where does it start from on the y? It doesn't exist from minus infinity. It only starts existing from zero. Okay, and from zero, in this case, it goes all the way up, 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 up till infinity. So in this case, we know that when you talk about the range, you would say, uh, no, why did I include that? Right, so y um, So you'd say for the range y Must be greater or equal to zero or you can just simply say y is an element of Okay zero to infinity okay 
right remember the square brackets mean that you are including it so it is actually applicable at zero but or, or rather at least the graph the graph is found at zero but it, it's not found uh, oh well it doesn't it goes all the way up until infinity now this is the domain for f okay but what would be the domain for f minus one keep in mind please so the domain here would be the range in the original graph so the only difference is now i'm going to be taking x must be greater or equal to zero now look at it definitely that is the point look at the green graph where does it exist from x is zero all the way up until infinity right whereas if i look at the range okay so the range for this graph would be y uh, uh, rather x sorry y is an element sure this thing is showing me proper flames today y is an element of real numbers so whatever was the domain here in the original okay x element of real numbers this becomes the range there okay right now just one other thing to touch on on the parabola please note that the inverse of a parabola is not a function remember by definition what did we say a function is this is where we have for every one x value you should have one y value let me just use my ruler quickly so that i show you you know when we apply the vertical line test look at this okay if i were to take any value using my ruler and draw a perfectly vertical line okay my ruler is misbehaving okay if i were to draw that vertical line look at where that vertical line is it touches that line there it touches that line there so in this case for one uh, x value you've got two y values all right so that is why it would not be a um it would not 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 be a function okay and yeah in a sense i think that's where i want to leave it in terms of um you know uh, uh inverses okay so obviously we will revisit them once we've put everything together okay uh please don't forget uh you know to subscribe to our channel uh, you know, it's honestly, honestly great to see the numbers, you know, going up. Um, we want to see more and more uh, people being helped. You know, the one thing that I pride, we pride ourselves with when it comes to creating this content is to see that it's really, really helpful. Um, you know, in future, I'll just be showing you testimonials of people that have actually benefited immensely from our, our, our channel. Uh, so I ask you, please. Uh, you know, recommend our channel, tell more people about it, because for every click, it actually changes someone's life. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time. All right. Uh, of course, we'll be continuing on functions, uh, but um, obviously we'll be doing something a little bit more different. All right, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.